This is Amsark, and in this video we are looking at the binomial distribution. So first of all, we need to look at the conditions of the binomial distribution, as there are four conditions that have to be met in order to use the binomial distribution. So first of all, there is two possible outcomes in each trial. So this means that you're either going to have a success, or you're going to have a failure. So that is the two possible outcomes you can have. There also has to be a fixed number of trials. So for example, the number of trials has to be specified before the experiment. So you may say there may be 10 trials, for example, and that is a fixed number. The trials also have to be independent of each other. So the first one cannot affect the second one which links into the idea that they have to be in uh, identical trials. So the probability has to be the same for each trial. So for example, it could be 0.45 for every single shot, for example. So it could be uh, shooting how many penalties somebody scores. And if the probability of them scoring is 0.45, then that would have to be exact the same each time. So in terms of setting up the binomial distribution, it has to be set up with a parameters n and p. So n is the number of trials. And then p is equal to the probability. And this is written as x is binomially distributed in terms of n comma p. So n is that idea of number of trials, and then probability is that. And that's why it has to be uh, identical trials, a fixed probability, and also a fixed number of trials. So individual probabilities, which is p where x is equal to x, and cumulation probabilities, where p is either less than, or it's more than x, or it's more than an equal to x, and they can both be found directly on a calculator, which is which this video will show how to do. So the first question says that the probability of a team winning a football game is 0.63. So if the team play the same team 10 times, what is the probability of winning exactly seven matches? So first of all, we'll see why we can use the, pro uh, the binomial distribution in this particular case. So the first condition is that there are two possible outcomes in each trial. And in this, one of the possible outcomes is you win. The other possible outcome is losing or drawing. So in other words, not winning. Now, although you may think there are three probabilities, three different uh, outcomes, because losing, drawing or winning, you're just counting it as winning or not winning. The next uh, condition that we need is a fixed number of trials. And this says here that you play the same team 10 times. So that 10 is our fixed number of trials. And then independent. Now, although they may, we are making an assumption they were independent and they may have external factors, which means they're not independent, for this we're going to assume they're independent, and that is because there is a fixed probability of 0.63. So that means that as we have this fixed probability, it means that we can use the binomial distribution. And we're going to be using the binomial probability distribution instead of a binomial cumulative distribution, which we'll look at later. And that is because they are winning exactly seven matches. So if they were winning eight matches, that wouldn't count, or nine matches, that wouldn't count. They have to win exactly seven matches. So that means that what we're going to do is we have to find what x is. We have to know what n is, and we also have to know what p is. So x, that is going to be 7, because that's they win exactly 7 matches. And n is going to be 10, because it's out of 10. The probability then is 0 0.63. So therefore, what you're going to do is you're going to use your calculators, and you're going to type this in to the binomial PD, which is binomial probability distribution. So you type that in, you press equals, and you'll find that the probability is equal to 0 0.2394. The next thing we will be looking at is about probability, um, the binomial cumulative uh, distribution. And that would be maybe if they were to win um, more than or equal to seven matches, which would need you to, uh, which would mean you need to find the probability of them winning eight matches and add that on. 
So the next thing to look at is binomial CD, which is binomial cumulative distribution. So this takes when it's something is probability is more than or equal to a number, or it's less than a number, for example, but we do need to learn this table here. And this is just normally n, but I put five in instead of n, so we can see exactly what it's doing. So when the probability of x is less than or equal to 5, that is when it stays exactly the same. So that means that if you're working out x, you would put 5 into your calculator. When it is just less than 5, however, that means that it's the probability of x is less than or equal to 4. So that means that when we're working it out, if it was less than 5, we want it in terms of equal. So we'll have to do n minus 1. Then, however, when we're looking at more than, you're going to have to do 1 minus when it's less than. So when the probability of x is just more than 5, you'll just be doing 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 5. And then when the probability of x is le more than or equal to 5, then you're doing the probability of 1 minus the, uh, one minus the probability of x is less than or equal to 4. So again, that's when you're doing the n minus 1. So for that one and that one there, you're having to do the n minus 1. That one, you're having to do the 1 minus, like you're having to do here. And then the only one which stays exactly the same is when x is less than or equal to a number. So here we have a question, and it says that a discrete random variable x is binomially distributed 30, 0.58. So if we remember, this is going to be n, and this is going to be p, the probability. So therefore, we need to work out what our x is, what our n is, and then what our p is. So n and p are given to us, 30 and 0.58, but then x, and this is more than or equal to 12. So if we look on this, p, when probability of x is more than or equal to a number, we do 1 minus the probability of x is less than or equal to n minus 1. So that means that what we're going to be doing for this one is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal n minus 1, 11. So that means this number we're putting in is 11. So therefore, this time, instead of using um, instead of using binomial PD as we did in the, the last example, this time we'll be using binomial CD, which is a different function on the computer. And we can work out that the probability that x is less than or equal to 11 is equal to 0 0.0151. So that means we're doing 1 minus 0 0.0151 is equal to 0 0.985. So therefore, the probability that x is more than or equal to 12 is going to be equal to 0 0.985. So here we have a more wordy question, and it says that somebody claims that they can tell the difference between two different brands, A and B, of T. They are given five pairs of cups, where in each pair, one cup contains brand A and one cup contains brand B. So assuming that they are guessing, find the probability that they correctly identify at least three pairs. So first of all, we need to work out what the distribution actually is. So we can say that X is binomially distributed, and we know it's going to be binomial. Uh, we know we can use binomial because uh, this has got the same probability. There's a fixed number of trials that it shows there. They're independent of each other. Um, so that's why we can use uh, the binomial distribution in this case. And then n is going to be 5, as it gives us, it says there's 5 pairs. And then p now is between two different brands, and one cup contains brand A and then one cup contains brand B, so it's going to be 0.5. So that means that X is binomially distributed 5, 0.5. So therefore, we're also working out to find the probability that they correctly identify at least three pairs. So that means that is a probability 
that the code x is going to be more than or equal to 3. Now that is also equal to, as we just learned out in the previous section, that is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So therefore, our x is going to be equal to 2. Our n is going to be equal to 5. And our p is going to be equal to 0 0.5. So when we put that into our calculator, and we'll put that into our calculator with um, binomial CD because it's cumulative and this is because it's that idea of more than or equal to so it's going to be binomial CD instead of binomial PD and we put that into our calculator and we get the probability is equal to 0 0.5 now normally we need to do that 1 minus 0 0.5 but obviously 1 minus 0 0.5 is simply just going to be 0 0.5 anyway so there's no need so the probability is equal to 0 0.5 so the final question that we'll look at today says that for any family of five children, A is the event there is at least one boy and one girl, and B is the event that there are more girls than boys. So a symmetrical binomial probability distribution can model X, and that is the number of girls in a family of five children. So are the events A and B independent of each other? So for this we'll be using the knowledge that we gained from the last video about being events being independent or mutually exclusive. But first of all, we need to work out the individual probabilities that there is either at least one boy and one girl, or that there are more girls than boys. And for both of them, we could use the binomial distribution. For the first one, though, it would actually just be easier to work out the probability that there are going to be zero boys or zero girls, and then minus that from one. So this can be done by working out the probability that all of them are boys, which is going to be a half to the power of five. And then we're going to add that to the probability that they're all girls, just a half to the power of five. And that is equal to one over 16. So therefore, we'll do one minus one over 16, which is equal to 15 over 16. So that's the probability that there is at least one boy and one girl. Then for the there are more boy, girls than boys, this is when we will use a, a the binomial um, cumulative distribution, as what we are saying is that the probability that x is more than or equal to 3. So this is because they're an odd number. In order to there to be more girls than boys, there would have to be three or more. And we know that that is going to be equal to one minus the probability of x being less than or equal to two. So therefore, what we have is x is equal to two. That we have that n is equal to five and that's because it's a family of five children and then p is going to be 0 0.5 it's a probability a boy or girl 0 0.5 so therefore that we're going to put that in and that is equal probability is equal to 0 0.5 again like the last question one minus 0 0.5 is just 0 0.5 so that is our answer there so now in order to to work this out we can say that 15 over 16 times by a half is equal to 0 0.46875 and if they were independent that would mean that this is the correct answer because independent means you can do probability a of the probability times B is going to be equal to the probability of A and B. So now we need to compare this to another way of working out the probability of A and B. And if they're the same, then that would mean that they're independent. So the other way of working this out is going to be working out what values it can be for both of them. So for A and B, it could be probability of X is equal to 3. 
or the probability of x is equal to 4. Now that is because if there's going to be, there can be three goals, this is for goals, so there could be three goals and that would fit both of them because there was at least one boy and one girl and there are more girls than boys or there could be four goals, again that fits both of them. There was at least one boy and one girl, and there are more girls than boys. If there were five, if, if x equals five, then that wouldn't be able to fit this because there isn't at least one boy. And if there were two or one, there would be more boys than girls. So therefore, we'll work these out individually. We're going to be using for this one, because it's equal to, we shall be using the idea of... Um, of by probability, binomial PD, binomial probability distribution instead of uh, binomial CD. So for the first one, X is equal to three, N is equal to five, and P is equal to 0 0.5. So therefore, P is equal on this one to 0 For the next one, we're going to say that x is equal to 4. Again, we'll be using binomial PD. n is equal to 5, and then p is equal to 0 0.5. Therefore, p is equal to 0 0.13625. Now, as these events are mutually exclusive, which means that they cannot happen at the same time, so you cannot have uh, three goals and four goals at the same time, then what you're going to have is this is going to be added together. So 0 0.3125 plus 0 0.13625 is equal to 0 0.46875. And hopefully, as we've seen, this is exactly the same as this. And that was gained by just times them together. This means that we can conclude, therefore, they are independent. And that is because they're exactly the same, two different ways of working it out. But that is how we use the binomial distribution as a way to work out a question like this and using knowledge that we gained from last video. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.